back to another video in this playthrough for GMT Games Prime Minister. We are playing the Clockwork C2 scenario, uh, climbing the greasy pole. Uh, and with that, we will just jump right back into the action. So to start the next turn, the Prime Minister gets four VPs um, and the opposition leader gets uh, two VPs. We've also moved all of our action cubes uh, back into place. Uh, we skip bill selection because we have bills on the board. So we uh, simply move into the action turns and the opposition leader is gonna go again. So with his first action, he's gonna flatter again because he does not have uh, a lead of uh, three or greater. He's based, He's ahead by two. So he's going to flatter again, getting himself to uh, five favor with Queen Victoria. And then with his second action, he is once again going to debate a bill. So let's look at which bill he's going to end up debating here. So his defense range is 300 to 350. So uh, this bill is just within his defense range. Um, and this one is also, or within his, I should say, his attack range, uh, as is this one. Now... Unfortunately, he's going to prioritize this bill uh, because it has a higher VP. So he's going to end up dropping that bill by 10. So that will take that down to a projected total of 330. Um, whereas this one might, have, I would have preferred this one. But the good news is I think they're, uh, uh, you know, the, my, Russell's going to focus on this this turn. So this gives me another turn to go to work on this. So that is all of his actions. So for my action, um, I am going to um, debate because I need to drive that uh, bill down um, even further. So we're gonna drive that down. Now that is down at 290, um, which should be good enough for this bill to like have to be withdrawn, I think. Um, I take my one standing. So when I take my next standing, I'm gonna get a second action cube, which will be very helpful. Also, um, I uh, am, when I get that three standing, um, this card becomes possible. If I have two favor and three standing, then um, I get the chief whip career card, which uh, allows me to coordinate debate. I can spend um, two cubes to actually uh, drop uh, a bill by quite a bit, which will turn out, I think will be very helpful moving forward. Uh, okay. So then the prime minister acts. And the first thing he does is draw an event card, as we know. So if his standing is less than or equal to 12, it is. And the highest bill is greater than 340, which I don't believe it is. So this is the highest bill and it is at 330. <laughs> Ironically, uh, he just dropped it. Uh, had it not been, he would have spent two cubes uh, to raise his standing. That's probably good because he would have gone up to having a fourth action cube, which I don't think is what we want. So now he is simply going to start taking action. So he is no longer going to influence because an influence action is now futile because the, the tracks are at their maximum. So we're going to immediately move to the second action. Now this is a bit of, oops, this is a bit of a special action. Um, it says 10 HB. So he is going to debate the bill that has the highest projected vote total. So that is going to cause him to focus on this bill. So it is at 330. So he is going to spend uh, one debate to raise that to 340. And let's just double check. His defense range is bills between uh, 280 to 340. Oh, sorry. Um, 250 to 340 because it is an, an M bill. Um, but it was at 330, so he is going to debate it, and that will take it to 340. And what we know is that he, the, the next uh, priority for him is the same thing, and he will do the same thing because it will take it up to 350. And you can kind of see, one of the things I really like about how kind of like well these um, clockwork uh, opponents work, he's now got this to 350, which is kind of his sweet spot for... Uh, for passing a bill. Um, so he will do that. And then on his next action, he will debate the other bill. I think he will anyway. The bottom range for it is 280. So let's just double check. That is still 
that is at 290. So he is going to debate that bill and bring it up to 300. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of a, a, an attack on that bill. I need that bill to fail. Um, so my debate card uh, works in my favor. But that is the end of that. So now bill resolution. So this bill has exactly 350 votes. So he is going to enact the uh, Crofters Holdings Scotland Act to enact to protect the land rights of Highland Crofters. So three victory points up in Farmers and Scotland. So everybody gets three victory points. And he goes up with Farmers, and he goes up with Scotland. So he goes up by three total. So he is now up to nine on the election projections. So I've done all of the uh, the first step of the, the parliamentary order process, which is I gave him four VP, I gave myself two VP, I reset all the action cubes. So we are back around to actions. So the opposition leader is not going to flatter this time. He currently has a lead of, of four on the, the, uh, the favor track. So he is not going to flatter, which means he is going to move immediately to uh, a debate action. Uh, his attack range is 300 to 350. This bill is currently at 300. So he is going to drop that bill down one. So it is now at 290. So that means that he will no longer take a debate action. So. He is going to skip that debate action, and he is going to instead spend his bill campaigning amongst the conservatives, and that will raise um, our election projections by three. So that's a little bit helpful there. It's kind of nice. Um, now, one thing I want to check before I do anything, um, his defense range for bills with all is 280 to 340, which means technically he would defend this bill. But he his maximum ability is to move this three spaces. So the best he could do is to get it to the minus 10 space, uh, which means that that bill would then, uh, that bill would be at uh, 320. So because he has no ability to get this bill into a passable range, into a range where he, he can pass it, he's not going to act on this bill. So I'm going to use that. So that means that I, there's no reason for me to take any actions to debate. So in which case, I'm going to hobnob and get myself a supporter card. Shut these up a little bit. Shut all of them up. I'm doing it. So I draw a supporter card, and I get Sarah Forbes Bonetta, um, Her Majesty's goddaughter. So I can either take one favor for myself or I can drop him by two favor. Now, it doesn't mean make any sense to drop him by two favor, but it actually makes quite a lot of sense to raise me by one favor. Uh, the reason for that being that when my standing goes up uh, this turn, uh, I will be able to flip over the chief whip card because I will have two favor and three standing. So having finished my action turn, I move my standing to three. That means I'm gonna get another action cube. I'll just put that on here now. And then I get to put this chief whip card up here amongst my career cards. So now I have this new ability, which is if I spend both my cubes, I can debate a bill down by 30. So now we go back over to our Clockwork Russell. And once again, we pull an event for him. If his standing is greater than nine and the highest bill is greater than 320, he would do something to increase his favor. I would have liked him to do that. I think, like, like I want him to waste his cubes a little bit, uh, but the highest bill is not greater than equal to 320, so he's not going to do that. So, so we look down his priorities. We know he's not going to influence. Um, we know he's not going to debate. So the next thing is, is he's going to. We're going to look at the moderates, gentry, and liberals track because odds are, if if all of those have the ability to move on the track, that is what he's going to do. So not moderates, I, I do that a lot. So uh, middle class can move, liberals can move, and the third one was gentry, was gentry, and gentry can move. So he is going to move himself up in liberals, that's plus three, I'm gonna do this as I do it. He's gonna move himself up plus one in gentry, which gives him plus two. This is quite good for him uh, on the eve of an election. And then he's going to move himself up in middle class, which takes him into that next box, which is such a bummer. 
So he's going to wipe me out in this next election is the uh, shorthand for, for, for what's about to happen. So that is all of his actions. Now he is going to withdraw this bill because um, it is uh, it has no ability to pass. So if you look uh, down here, the, if uh, at the very bottom, if a clockwork, let me do it this way. See. If a clockwork PM has no bill with greater than 340 projected votes, it withdraws the bill. Um, and so he's gonna lose one standing. The opposition leader is gonna gain one standing and two VPs. So our opposition leader moves up to six standing. He drops to 10 standing and we gain two VPs. We are still falling way behind. Um, now, in addition to that, um, I get to choose one standing, one favor, or two uh, victory points. Now, it's going to take me a while to get my standing to eight. Um, this one, I'm already at the favor that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, the standing because what that means is that at the end of next turn, I will be able uh, to uh, I will be able to use this uh, to activate this career card. So we'll, we, we will take the standing improvement uh, so that this card will come into play next turn. So now we are in a situation where uh, we have to decide about an election because there are no more bills left on the board. And basically, the prime minister will will postpone the election if he is um, either projected to lose or he's not projected to pick up seats. Well, uh, at this point, he's projected to pick up 30 seats uh, and win handily. So he's going to go ahead and hold the election here. So to hold the election, we draw an uncertainty card to find out uh, what the actual result is. So the actual result is that it goes down by two. Now, a common misperception is that you move this two spaces here. That's not actually the case. You look at his projected total, which is 355, and you subtract two from that. So the net result of this is I, I take that number down to 353. So instead of him going to 360 seats after this election, he's only going to go to 350. 50 seats. Hopefully that makes sense. Now he will gain VPs for picking up two seats. I got to remind myself um, how the VPs for elections work. There it is. So he gets two VPs plus two VPs for going up by two seats. So he's going to get four VPs. And then we have to count up the number of partisans. So he has 170 from the liberals track, and that is all. So in his government, 170 are partisans, and the remainder, 180, are moderates. So this puts him in a bit of a pickle going into this next turn because uh, he has a very balanced government. And it's an interesting thing in this game, which is, when your when your government is heavily balanced between moder moderates and partisans, it can be bad because if he draws a bunch of cross party bills with uh, with um, that key off moderates, he's going to be way off his vote projection totals. Now, his ability to influence makes that a little bit easier for him. He can just change this mix, um, but at least it forces him to spend time on those actions, which allows me to to do some other things while he's uh, not doing anything. So we'll pause there uh, and we will come back with um, the next turn, uh, including uh, we, starting with bill selection. I'll do all the action cube and all the bookkeeping stuff uh, before the video. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I uh, hope you're enjoying the video, uh, the playthrough uh, of, of Prime Minister. Um, as well as the channel in general. Uh, please leave comments with suggestions on uh, things like other games that you'd love to see come to the channel or improvements uh, that can be made uh, to the channel. And we will see you in the next video on Agility Snips Gaming Table.